Wow, hello middle schoolers, how are we doing? Yeah. Woo. My name, I, I, need, I feel like I need to say my name really quick because while we were uh, entering in, someone called me Gary. My name is not Gary, my name is Larry and I am joined by two of my favorite people in the whole world. Uh, we'll go all the way on the end, save the best for last. Sorry, but this what? is Garrett. He is our college and small groups pastor. And this is my beautiful wife, Kaylee. And Kaylee and I, Garrett actually married Kaylee and I. Yeah, he did. Don't so, wouldn't be married without me. We would have just found somebody else to do it. Yeah, well, but thank you. Anyways, uh, like I said, they are two of my favorite people. And if this is your first time here or you weren't here last week and you're like, why are there three people on the stage? There's normally only one. What's going on? We are in the middle of our Relationships Revamp series where we're gonna have a series of panels, a couple of awesome people up here. Like I said, if you weren't here last week, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. Uh, last week we talked about our relationships with our friends, our family, uh, and people. But this week, we're gonna get into the relationships that everybody wants to talk about. We're talking about dating. Yeah, you heard that? They're, they're interested in, in this topic of dating. And I will say this, we're not going to talk as much about when you are dating and you're in the middle of dating. We're going to talk about that next week with our girls and guys panels. But what we're going to talk about tonight is actually, mm. it's okay, I can, mm -mm -mm. I am exercised in the virtue of patience, so I can wait. <laughs> Very nice. There you go. This week, uh, we are actually going to talk a lot about before we start dating. Uh, and so why waste any time? And we're going to get right into it. Our first question uh, that I want you guys to go to, Garrett, I'm actually going to give this one to you first. Ugh. How do you pursue godly relationships? How do you pursue godly relationships? Well, I would say first, you have to know what a godly relationship looks like. So what does, what does God want in a relationship, right? So you have to go to scripture, see what he has to say, be a part of a community and learn about what a godly relationship is. And really then, you're looking at what a godly marriage is um, because relationships should uh, shoot, should drive toward, uh, should be a path toward marriage. And so the first step in pursuing a godly relationship is knowing what that looks like to begin with. Yeah, and just to add to that, I would make it very clear, are you both believers? Um, is your faith aligned with each other? Because that's really important. Um, and it's also important to remember you quickly become who you spend the most time with. So 1 Corinthians 15, says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Yeah. So you both talked a little bit about uh, like this word community. What, what does that have to do with anything? Because we're talking about what do I do if I want a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Isn't that all that dating is, is just me and another person? What does community have to do with it at all? Yeah, so... I think that it's smart to pursue friendship first and not just jump right into dating, but see, hey, do I like this person as a friend? Um, do we have fun together? Um, and then from that, when you are wanting to pursue a dating relationship, um, stay in community, ask for accountability, and be open and honest with your parents. Um, they do care, and it might feel a little awkward to let your parents in, but it's worth it. Yeah, I think uh, you look throughout scripture and everywhere in scripture it, start, uh, it talks about making decisions, which the decision to pursue a godly relationship, the decision to enter into any relationship is a decision, right? You're making a choice. Uh, and when we make choices, the scripture says we should do that in community. It says the, the fool makes decisions on their own. The fool makes decisions uh, without taking counsel, um, but wisdom is found in the counsel of many. And so uh, that includes parents, that includes uh, your small group leaders as, as spiritual guides for you, um, that includes prayer as you listen to the Holy Spirit, um, and it includes, also includes your friends and the other people in your small group who know you best and who actually love you and would give you good advice. Yeah, I think that's, that's really important because I think what so often happens is when, even when we hear like Bible verses, like wisdom is found in the counsel of many, that many, we want to just be people who are our age who are like hungry to be in a relationship too and we don't want it to be our parents we don't want it to be our small group leaders or other believers and so what's so important like why not just our friends what's the harm like in pursuing a godly relationship 
if just your friends are telling you to do it? Um, I think that oftentimes your friends might just tell you what you want to hear and they don't want to hurt your feelings and maybe they don't want you to get mad at them and your parents or your small group leaders, um, they want to tell you what might hurt, not to hurt you, but because they really care about the situation and they really care about your well-being. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> you look in the Old Testament, there's a passage where uh, the, the son of a king is now entering, he's becoming king himself, right? The prince is becoming king. And he gets advice on how to, how to treat the people in his kingdom. He gets advice from, uh, from the elders, so other people who, have, who are older, who have lived life, uh, who have seen different seasons. And they tell him to do one thing. They actually tell him uh, to treat people with kindness uh, and don't burden them. And he didn't really like that advice. So then he went to his friends and he asked his friends what to do, people his age. And they told him that he should uh, put a heavy burden and a heavy yoke upon people. Uh, and then they will respect you because uh, they'll see you as powerful and they'll listen to you. And so the guy, the king now, instead of taking the elder's advice, he took his friend's advice and it didn't work too, out too well for him. It, was, it turned out to be terrible advice, uh, a lot of revolting. And so it just, it's just an example of the wisdom that comes from people who are older, um, the wisdom that comes from people who have studied God's word longer than you have, um, who uh, have been through different seasons of life that are not the exact same as yours, because we all experience different things, um, but, but similar uh, hopes and dreams and desires. Um, and they've pursued those things, and they've seen both uh, the, the blessings and the consequences of certain decisions, and they can advise you in that way. Yeah, that's really good. And so now that we've talked a little bit about, like, okay, this is what you do to, to set yourself up for a godly relationship, you know, you're hearing other people. Did you have something to add? Or you just nope. you're just not in agreement. Okay, I'm just. Ready I thought you were about to cut question. me off. Okay, no, never, never. Okay, I'll never do that. Now that we have talked a little bit of, <laughs> you're, you're throwing me off now. We've talked a little bit about the. Okay, now we we're going to set ourselves up for a godly relationship. What's the appropriate time for that to come to fruition? What's the appropriate time to start dating? Is there an appropriate time to start dating? Yeah, I think there's <laughs> there's an appropriate time. It's not always the exact same time for every person. Um, but I think if I could put some steps to it, like when's the appropriate time to start dating? First, I would say what I said already, start with learning uh, what a godly relationship looks like. Then I would say start by being a godly individual first. Thirdly, I would say put yourself in a position, really, like Kaylee said earlier, uh, you're looking for somebody who is equally yoked. You're looking for somebody who is also uh, godly, pursue, has the same faith as yours. Um, so... Learn what a godly relationship is, start by being a godly individual, and then put yourself in situations uh, where godly men and women are uh, so that you can see uh, what people are out there. You can start establishing friendships first. Um, and then when you start to make that turn from friendship to um, a deeper friendship, like a, a dating relationship, um, you really should do that when you, are, when you believe you are just that one step away from being able to enter into a marriage. Because like I said earlier, dating is meant to lead to marriage. Right? There's not, there, there are not other reasons for dating. Literally zero other reasons for dating. So you should start dating when you think, as soon as you figure out if this other person is right for you, so, so you can glorify God alongside one another uh, for the rest of your time here, when you're ready, when you are ready, when you see that person that you can enter into a marriage, that's when you start dating because that's the point of dating. So what if all of my friends are dating? Like what, what's the harm in looking to our friends or looking to the world, like social media? What's the harm in looking to, to those things as the gauge on when we should start dating? Because if everyone's doing it, then it's what I should be doing, right? Yeah, uh, I think that... That was a sarcastic question. I so. know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that comparison with anything is the thief of joy. It's not... You never have something good come out of comparison. So um, comparing where you're at in dating is just even more harmful. And this is not something that you should compare because you don't know what is going on in that relationship. It could be something you actually don't even want. So. Yeah, I would say... 
we don't take our cues from culture. Right? Culture doesn't decide, our friends don't decide what we do. What other people are doing doesn't, shouldn't be the deciding factor when we make decisions of whether we should be dating. We take our cues from God's word, which is the Holy Spirit speaking through his word uh, to us, to our hearts, to our minds, um, shaping us, transforming us, renewing us in the ways of God. Um, and so, to be honest, the Bible doesn't say much about dating, uh, but what it does say, talk about is healthy friendships um, and good ways to do that, and then it talks about marriage. And so dating is a relatively new phenomenon uh, in, in the world, in the history of humanity. Dating's like 120 years old, max, uh, and even now, like maybe 40 to 60% of the world does it. So there are many peoples who don't date, they get married, uh, and throughout the history of humanity, including scripture, you do not see dating, but you do see healthy marriages. And so um, when it's appropriate time to start dating, when just because your friends are doing it, that doesn't mean you ought to be doing it as well. Uh, we follow scripture and the leading of the Holy Spirit, yeah. not what culture is doing. Yeah, I think that's really good because we see that culture is constantly, it's, it, the standards and the expectations are always changing and different pressures are being put on us. And it's so a moving target. It's exhausting. Like, and I think that you guys all know that. You both, I've talked to you both and experienced that. Like, it's, it's hard to keep up with that. But when we, we allow scripture to become our standard of like, who am I becoming so that I can maybe one day be in a relationship? Um, that, that's a lot easier of something to keep up with. Of like, this isn't going to change. This is a standard that's going to be this way forever. Uh, and so this kind of leads us into our next question. But I think what so often happens is we see our friends and we see other people in relationships where they're being supported by another person. And so I think that that in and of itself isn't a bad thing to be supported. And so if God loves me, then won't he give, some, give me someone to, or give someone to support me? If God loves me, won't he give me someone to support me? Uh, I'll start by answering. Twister, sorry. Oh, we're good. I'll start by answering this question directly, and then I'll go a little bit more into what I think the heart of the question is. But uh, if God loves me, won't He give me someone to support me? Well, the reality is He does love you. He does love you, um, and He already has has demonstrated that He's love you, that He loves you, uh, and He has also because He loves you, He has already given you a person to support you. He has given you someone to support you, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Um, God says in his word, 1 Peter, or 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that he has given us everything that we need uh, for life and godliness, um, and that is, that is through the work of Jesus, that is through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you if you are a follower of Jesus. And that's even through the community that he gives you right here, um, the, the shepherds that he gives you, the spiritual guides like Larry and Stephanie and your pastor Tucker. Uh, he, gives you, he gives us all of these things to support us. There's nothing in scripture that says that we have to have another person to accomplish something that Jesus or the Holy Spirit cannot accomplish. Um, so he has, he has demonstrated that for us. Yeah, and I think going back to um, what I think the person asking this was talking about was a boyfriend or a girlfriend um, it's important not to hold God to a standard that he didn't he didn't set he didn't say that he was gonna promise you a boyfriend or a girlfriend because ultimately that's not why you're here um, so just remember that and don't be angry with God because you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend right now because it's not yeah. it's time yeah I think that's good and I think the root of the question really though is if God loves me won't he give me what I want because right now I want a boyfriend, right now I want a girlfriend. So if God loves me, won't he, won't he give me what I want? And I think the problem with that assumption is that the Bible tells us in multiple places that our desires uh, do not always fit into God's timing and our desires do not always align with God's will for our lives. Uh, and that's a result of sin, that's a result of brokenness that we all experience. Uh, we're all impacted by that. Uh, and even, even more than this, there are times when our desires are good, but God knows we need something else in this certain season of our life, in this certain moment, uh, or sometimes in our lives as a whole. And this is where we have to lean into trusting God and believing, just like you said, we have to hold him, we can hold him to things that he says. We can hold him to things that he declares that he is and that he has promised us. He hasn't promised us a wife. 
He hasn't promised us a husband. He hasn't promised us a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, but what we do see in Scripture is that Romans 8.28, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Um, and we know God loves us despite whether or not one of your desires are being fulfilled. Uh, it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, this is how we know God loves us. Right? This is how God shows his love, is that he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So we can know for certain that God loves us. And we can know that he has given us the support we need uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that there, there's a lot in that. And I think really the root of it too is just like when you're looking for support, uh, we don't need to find that. Even in like our marriage, like yeah. my ultimate support in your marriage, like your ultimate support, and then even going all the way down to dating, like our ultimate support comes from the person of the Holy Spirit who, who God has given us uh, for those of us who are believers. Um, yeah. Also, and you know this as well, you guys are married, you can speak to it, but... Well, I'm married too, but you guys are both here. Uh, my wife is a fantastic support for me. I still need friends. I still need, I still need uh, other, I still need our pastors. Like I still need my small group. I still need other people. Um, and so just having a, a girlfriend, having a boyfriend, that's not going to, to satisfy. That's not going to, to quench whatever you think you need for support. Um, so you, we find that ultimately in in Jesus and the community that he puts around us. Yeah. Always like back to, and that's, I, I think we could hark back on this for 20 more minutes of being in a godly community. And that's why like we started with being around. That's why we started this series with what, why is it so important to find godly friends and people around us? Because when we get into the dating potentially in middle or high school, like you're going to want those people around you to remind you of those truths uh, because we so quickly forget them when our desires are so consumed with a boyfriend or a girlfriend uh, or whatever it is the world is, and the culture is throwing at us. So uh, we're going to move on to a question uh, that is a little more topical. Uh, it, it's something about dating and, and there's a lot that we're going to get into. And so I just want to answer this question just straight as it is on the screen. What should you do if, oh, back one more. What should you do if an ex tries to manipulate you to get back together? All right, I'm going to be relatively short with this one compared to my last responses. Uh, but even just looking at this question, the issue is deeper than your relationships. And I'd like everyone to listen to me right now because this is an important answer to this question. The issue is deeper than your relationship, right? The person uh, that is doing this, that is, that is trying to manipulate you uh, to, to continue in a relationship, what they need is help. And the most loving thing you can do for them is to, to get them the help that they need. And you have to understand that the responsibility and the power uh, to shoulder the weight of the healing that they, they need doesn't fall on your shoulders. You cannot do that uh, by yourself. And so, honestly, the fact that they played that card or the fact that they're, they're trying to use that as a reason uh, to stay connected to you is really evidence uh, that they need help and that they don't love you. So, what you should do is not get back together with them and or stay with them and get them help that they need. I know you have something good for this. Yeah, um, it's also important to remind yourself you do not have the responsibility or the power to heal them. Um, that weight should not be on your shoulders. Um, and this is also why it's important to have that relationship with your parents yep. because um, they, they want to help you. And if you feel like you don't have that relationship with your parents, I encourage you to pursue that and um, try on your end. And if you don't, then that's why there's the student team and the pastors here. Like they are here to help and they're here for you. There's two things that I will, will tack on to this question. One, and I think Garrett, you, you mentioned this, this is something that we don't want to wait. Uh, and specifically this question comes out of like a self-harm, like if they're attempting self-harm as a manipulation tactic, uh, get them help today. 
uh, because in these situations, we always assume the worst, uh, and that's for the better of them and for us. Uh, but I will say this too, and I don't think we, we had talked about this yet, but if that is you, and I don't want to shame anybody if that's a situation where you have played that card, or if that's something that you're actually dealing with, uh, this is a safe place for you to come as well, not just for someone who is in that relationship and is dealing with like the hardships of trying to bear those burdens. If yeah, you have absolutely. those burdens yourself, like come let us know. And there is no shame and guilt that will be thrown upon you uh, in those situations. Yeah. Every life is very valuable. So yeah. Yeah. And healing is truly available. So yeah. come get that. <laughs> Uh, so we are all out of time. Uh, we had one more question, but I, I want to respect because we have another uh, panel that we're going to get to later for the high schoolers. Uh, but I will ask uh, Garrett if you could close us out. And before you do that, uh, if there's anything else that you guys need to talk to us about, uh, that last question I know was heavy and it was really quick. Uh, and so if there's a conversation that needs to be had further, I want to invite you. Like We'll make ourselves available after this. Tucker and Steph will be available. Uh, and so come find us. Talk to us tonight. Uh, or if you just have any more questions that like, hey, why didn't my question get asked, bring it up in small group. Talk about it with the rest of your group. Uh, continue on the conversation uh, in your small group. So thank you guys so much. You guys give Kaylee and Garrett a hand. Yeah. All right. Garrett, if you wouldn't mind praying us out. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for uh, this opportunity. Thank you for uh, the, the time and the space and the place that you have uh, created for, for these conversations to be had uh, and to be made public. Um, we, th we do ask that uh, the truth um, that was told, the truth that was um, communicated uh, from your word, uh, we ask that it, it sinks deep into, um, into the minds of the middle schoolers here, um, that those up, of us up here, that we are reminded and refreshed by these truths. Uh, we ask that as, a, as we consider it, as we think about it in small groups, um, we ask that you move these these truths uh, down into our hearts and you begin to transform us uh, by the work of your spirit. Uh, and we ask these things uh, with the, the trust and the belief that when we come before you um, and we ask for things according to your word, uh, that you accomplish that. And so we believe uh, that transformation uh, has happened here in the lives uh, of these students and, and we thank you ahead of time already for it. And so uh, we, we praise you uh, and we make these requests in the name of Jesus. Amen.